Today, we have many amazing things to eat. Agriculture and trade have completely revolutionised our diets, but not everyone can feast freely. Many people have special needs that shape what they can eat and when. This program examines three major types of special food needs. Food allergies and intolerances, dietary related diseases and disorders, and the cultural and religious beliefs that shape diet. But first, to understand some of the circumstances that lead to special food needs, we need to understand the vital role of diet in our lives. Generally speaking, every one of us needs the same nutrients, but the proportions and amounts change according to age, health, level of activity, gender, build and weight. In the human lifespan, the first year is the most intensive growth period, with a healthy baby tripling in weight and growing 50% in height. For newborn infants and babies up to six months old, a mother's milk supplies all the nutrients and energy needed in the correct proportions and most readily absorbed form. It contains antibodies, is hygienic and the right temperature. Sometimes, commercially prepared infant milk formula has to be used. This closely replicates the nutrients in breast milk. Between six months and a year, solid foods are gradually introduced to wean the baby from milk and get him or her used to different flavours, colours, textures and consistencies. After two years, most children are fully weaned from milk and most energy needs are supplied by carbohydrate-rich foods and fat from cow's milk, meat, poultry and fish. Animal-based foods also supply protein, iron and fat-soluble vitamins A and D. Vegetables and fruit provide water-soluble vitamins and minerals. From age 6 to 12, children almost double their weight, gaining 5.5 pounds and growing 2 inches a year on average. Bigger serves of grain-based foods, vegetables and fruit provide energy for child growth and increased physical activity. Dairy products in many forms are used to provide phosphorus and calcium. Meat and eggs provide protein for growth, development and repair, and energy. During puberty and adolescence, energy requirements are higher than at any other time in the life cycle, mainly because social, academic and physical activity is so greatly increased. As well, height increases by 25%, body mass by 40%. Requirements for protein, vitamins and minerals are therefore proportionately higher. By adulthood, physical growth has slowed and energy needs are reduced. A balanced, nutritious diet, however, is very important to provide nutrients needed for repair of body cells, maintenance of healthy immune system and for body energy needs. Carbohydrates should provide the highest proportion of energy needs. Protein maintains body tissues. Fats are needed for fat-soluble vitamins and essential fatty acids. Vitamins in fruit and vegetables need constant replenishment, as do minerals like calcium. As we reach late adulthood, our nutritional needs remain the same, but at a reduced amount because of reduced activity levels and reduced metabolic rate. We need energy and nutrients to keep us healthy. Amounts vary between people and different stages of physical development. Some people must avoid certain foods either because of allergy, intolerance, disease, disorder or cultural religious beliefs. A food allergy is when the body mistakes a beneficial protein for a harmful one and reacts as if it's being attacked. Signs or symptoms are typically coughing, sneezing, migraines, rashes, nausea, vomiting or diarrhoea. In severe cases, anaphylactic shock can occur, which requires emergency medical assistance. Symptoms of anaphylactic shock include a dropping in blood pressure and airways narrowing, resulting in serious breathing difficulty, 
loss of consciousness, and even death. Food intolerance, on the other hand, is an inability to digest a particular food in the gastrointestinal tract. The food passes through unprocessed or lingers in the gut fermenting, producing excess gas. There are three main foods that people have allergies or intolerances to, peanuts, seafood and milk. A peanut allergy is one of the most common food allergies, affecting about 1 in 200 people. Allergic reactions to peanuts are generally mild. Hives, eczema and vomiting are the most common complaints, but reactions can also include anaphylaxis. Even the tiniest amounts of peanut can trigger symptoms. Ice cream, chocolate, nougat and biscuits can all contain peanuts, but even products like kebabs, spaghetti sauces, soups, condiments and vegetable fats and oils can contain peanuts. Laws require that any product that contains peanut must be labelled to that effect. Some manufacturers will also label their products as possibly containing traces of nuts. In such situations, multiple products may have been made on the same production line and cross-contamination cannot be ruled out. An allergy to peanuts is usually diagnosed early on in life. Unfortunately, the only proven treatment for a peanut allergy is complete avoidance, requiring constant vigilance for the sufferer. An allergy to seafood affects one in a thousand people. It occurs most commonly where seafood is a significant part of the diet. Many allergic reactions to seafood are mild, but more severe symptoms can include swelling of the face or throat, dizziness, difficulty thinking, intense fear, vomiting or diarrhoea. Like peanut allergy, anaphylaxis is the most severe form of allergic reaction. The major groups of seafood that can trigger allergic reactions are vertebrates, in particular scaly fish, and invertebrates. A seafood allergy is often restricted to just one of these seafood groups, and people who are allergic to one group can usually tolerate seafood from the other. Complete avoidance of the offending seafood group is often advised, yet this can be difficult. Like peanuts, seafood products are common in unlikely foodstuffs, and even the smallest trace can trigger an allergic reaction. Lactose intolerance, an intolerance to milk and dairy products, is by far the most common of food intolerances, estimated to affect up to 75% of the world's population. And often not even diagnosed, the symptoms include nausea, cramps, flatulence, bloating and diarrhoea. Lactose is the major sugar in all mammalian milk. Normally, when we eat something containing lactose, the body produces an enzyme called lactase in the small intestine. Lactase breaks down lactose into simpler sugar forms called glucose and galactose, which are then easily absorbed into the bloodstream and turned into energy for our bodies. People with lactose intolerance do not produce enough of the lactase enzyme to break down lactose. Instead, undigested lactose sits in the gut causing gas and then usually diarrhoea because the intestine cannot absorb the lactose-containing foods. Lactose intolerance especially affects people from non-dairy cultures. It is estimated that up to 80% of people of African, Middle Eastern, Southern European, South American, Asian, Aboriginal and Native American lineage are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerance is managed by avoiding products containing lactose. There are, however, dairy products suitable for consumption even for lactose intolerant people. Most cheese contains little lactose, yet still contains all the essential nutrients that milk contains. Bacterium in yogurt breaks down lactose sugars, making it easily digested. As well, modern dairies today produce lactose-free milk. A food allergy is when the body mistakes a good protein for a harmful one and reacts as if it's being attacked. 
symptoms include coughing, sneezing, migraines, rashes, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Anaphylaxis, the most extreme reaction, requires emergency medical aid. A food intolerance is the inability to digest particular foods in the gastrointestinal tract. The food passes through unprocessed or ferments in the gut, producing excess gas. Milk, peanuts and seafood are foods that many people have allergies or intolerances to. Food is vital for living. It keeps us healthy, active and functioning well. But it can also make us sick. In the past, this was most commonly due to lack of food. But today, it is abundance of food that causes many problems. Whilst health is a complex equation of influences, dietary-related diseases and disorders are now the most significant health factor in the developed world. They include conditions like cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes and bowel cancer. Cardiovascular disease accounts for 17 million deaths annually around the world. It contributes significantly to illness, disability, poor quality of life and massive levels of health expenditure. It is the leading cause of death and illness in many developed countries and is expected to become the single leading public health problem for the entire world by 2020. Cardiovascular disease refers to all the diseases and conditions involving the heart and blood vessels. These include coronary heart disease, stroke, heart failure, peripheral vascular disease and rheumatic and congenital heart diseases. The underlying problem is atherosclerosis, the build-up of fat, cholesterol and other substances in the arteries. This build-up is called plaque. When arteries harden with plaque, they become narrower and the heart strains to pump blood. High blood pressure is caused by the artery's inability to expand in response to each heartbeat. Constantly straining to do its job, the heart gets weaker eventually resulting in heart failure. As well, a clot can block the artery causing the death of associated tissue or it can dislodge and block an artery causing a heart attack. If it blocks an artery in the brain, it causes a stroke. The major preventable risk factors for cardiovascular disease are high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, being overweight, high alcohol use, diabetes, tobacco smoking and insufficient physical activity. Sadly, up to 90% of adults in industrialised nations have at least one modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular diseases and 25% have three or more risk factors. As well, the prevalence of obesity has doubled over the last 20 years. A healthy diet can play a major role in preventing or reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. Dietary guidelines recommend that we eat plenty of vegetables, legumes and fruit, plenty of good unsaturated fats, lots of whole grain cereal, foods low in salt and plenty of water. By enjoying a diet low in fat and salt, but naturally rich in vitamins, minerals, nutrients and fibre, we can all reduce our chances of cardiovascular disease. In some people, the system that regulates blood pressure goes awry. Arteries throughout the body stay constricted, driving up the pressure in the larger blood vessels. Sustained high blood pressure, like this, is called hypertension. Hypertension is dangerous because it causes silent damage to the blood vessels of the heart. If left untreated, this damage progresses over time and can cause a number of serious conditions, including atherosclerosis, stroke and heart failure. Hypertension often has no warning signs or symptoms and usually lasts a lifetime. Uncontrolled, it can lead to heart and kidney disease and stroke. It is estimated that 972 million people worldwide 
26% of the planet's adult population are affected by high blood pressure. But this figure is set to jump by 60%, so that by 2025, over 1.5 billion people, one in three of the adult population, will be affected by the condition, most in developing regions of the world. Like cardiovascular disease, Hypertension is closely related to dietary factors, especially a modern Western diet, high in fat and salt. Dietary factors, including low calcium intake, insufficient magnesium and potassium intake, excessive salt and fat intake, have been shown to correlate with blood pressure. A diet that is low in saturated fat and emphasizes fruits, vegetables, whole grain products, fish, poultry, nuts, and low-fat dairy foods has proven to reduce blood pressure. Food keeps us healthy, active and functioning, but it can also make us sick. In the past, this was most commonly due to malnutrition or starvation. Today, it is abundance of food that causes many problems. Dietary-related diseases are now the most significant health-related issue in the industrialised world. Cardiovascular disease is expected to become the leading cause of death worldwide by 2020. Hypertension is expected to affect one in three adults by 2025. Both conditions are closely diet related. Diabetes is a condition where the body cannot maintain normal blood glucose or insulin levels. There are three main types of diabetes, type 1, type 2 and gestational diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the body's immune system attacks the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas and destroys them. The pancreas then produces little or no insulin. Gestational diabetes can occur in pregnancy when a woman produces an excess of glucose. This condition is generally temporary. It is type 2 diabetes, however, that accounts for over 90% of all diabetes cases, affecting an estimated 150 million people worldwide. Type 2 diabetes occurs when digestive juices break down food into a sugar called glucose. The glucose passes into our bloodstream, where it is available for body cells to use for growth and energy. For the glucose to get into the cells, insulin must be present. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas, a gland behind the stomach. In people with diabetes, the pancreas either produces little or no insulin, or the body cells do not respond to the insulin that is produced. As a result, glucose is filtered like waste from the blood, then passed out of the body. Consequently, the body loses its main source of fuel. If undetected or poorly controlled, Diabetes can lead to blindness, kidney failure, limb amputation, cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke and impotence. Over 75% of people with type 2 diabetes die of related conditions, reducing life expectancy by 5 to 10 years. In 1985, an estimated 30 million people worldwide had diabetes. This figure is expected to rise to over 330 million by 2025. The risk factors for diabetes are age, family history and being part of a high-risk ethnic group. But in many cases, type 2 diabetes could be prevented or delayed by good diet. Bowel cancer, cancer of the colon or rectum, is the fourth most common cancer worldwide and a particularly common cancer in industrialised countries. Untreated, bowel cancer eventually spreads to the liver and other organs, which is fatal. If detected at an early stage, the disease can be cured by removal. 90% of the risk for bowel cancer is estimated to be due to dietary factors, with the other 10% due to inherited genetic factors. We understand this through studies of migrating populations. For example, when Chinese people who generally have a low incidence of bowel cancer move to a Western country to live, 
they have been seen to rapidly acquire a greater risk of developing bowel cancer, the same risk as that found in the country to which they have moved. A diet high in fat and low in fibre consumption is believed to increase the risk of contracting bowel cancer. Fibre helps to speed up the passage of cancer-causing substances through the bowel. Modern prevention strategy recognises the importance of good diet in areas of high risk for bowel cancer. A high intake of calories and obesity are both risk factors for bowel cancer. As well, char-grilled meat and fish and high alcohol intake increase the risk. Diet-related conditions include cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension and bowel cancer. Type 2 diabetes affects 150 million people worldwide. This condition can be prevented or delayed by good diet. Bowel cancer is the fourth most common cancer worldwide. 90% of the risk for bowel cancer is due to dietary factors. Another way we regulate food is through culture and religion. Religious laws can influence our diet, shaping what we eat and when. Culture also shapes diet with some dishes very strongly identified with a specific culture. Cultural beliefs refer to the values and perspective an individual culture holds precious. In the case of food, it refers to foods that are highly prized in the culture, shaping diet significantly. A good example of this is the importance of rice in many Asian cultures. There is evidence of rice crops in Thailand dating back over 4,000 years. So deep and ancient is our relationship with rice that the words for rice and food are identical in several Asian languages. In Bali, it is believed that Lord Vishnu caused the earth to give birth to rice. Buddhist scriptures make frequent reference to rice, and Chinese myth states that the precious things are not pearls and jade, but the five grains, of which rice is first. Rice has always been valued highly in Japan. During the Edo period, salaries and wages were calculated in rice. Beyond its earthly value, however, Japanese have a strong religious belief in rice and its mystical power. Religion also significantly shapes our diet. From laws that prohibit certain foods to fasts and feasts that commemorate significant dates and events to foods which symbolise religious ideas and concepts. Perhaps the best known religious restriction regarding food relates to the pig both Jewish and Muslim religions forbid the eating of pork. For Jewish people, the prohibition comes from Torah. For Muslim people, prohibition comes from their holy book, the Quran. Contemporary thinking identifies a health basis for this religious decree. Pigs commonly carry the parasite Trichinella spiralis. When pork is eaten insufficiently cooked, the parasite is absorbed into the human body where it breeds eventually making its way into muscle fibre. The infection, trichinosis, can cause severe health damage. For Hindus, the abstinence from meat-eating extends to another animal, the cow. The cow is a very holy animal in Hindu religion, representing Lord Krishna in mythology. Many cultures and religions have identified foods as being symbolic of something greater. In Christian culture, an egg represents new life and rebirth, as seen at Easter time. Similarly, bread and wine are given out symbolically as the flesh and blood of Christ during the Eucharist. The Chinese have many symbolic foods. Egg rolls, or spring rolls, resemble gold bars and are therefore often served at New Year's time as a symbol of wealth and prosperity. As well, a fish served whole is a symbol of prosperity. Ducks represent fidelity in Chinese culture and are therefore a popular wedding dish. Also, red dishes are featured at weddings and other celebrations as red is the colour of happiness. 
Culture and religion play a critical part, not just in what we can eat, but when it can be eaten. Fasting, choosing not to eat food, is often an expression of restraint and self-discipline that brings worshippers closer to their divine by controlling the needs of the body. Lent is the famous Catholic period of 40 days fasting, requiring the faithful to abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and abstain from meat on all Fridays during the time before Easter. It recalls the time Christ spent shortly before beginning his public ministry, overcoming temptation in the wilderness. This practice teaches control of fleshly desires, penance for sins, and solidarity with the poor. During the month of Ramadan, Muslims abstain from food and drink from dawn until sunset. The month is a special time of worship, reading from the Quran, doing charitable acts, and allowing individuals the opportunity for reflection and purification. Each day's fast is broken with water and dates before prayers. At the end of Ramadan, Muslims celebrate the end of the fast with the joyous festival of Eid al-Fatah, the festival of breaking the fast. Feasting, too, plays a very significant part in religious life all around the world. Feasts celebrate the end of fasts, harvest time, and a time of giving thanks to the divine. Christmas is, of course, another famous time of feasting. Christmas celebrates the birth of Christ with a traditional feast of fowl, such as turkey, chicken and geese, and ham. Modern historians also point out the pagan roots of Christmas, celebrating the halfway mark of the northern winter and welcoming the beginning of longer, warmer days. Today, Christmas is a religious celebration, but one that brings families together to rejoice and strengthen ties. We regulate food through culture and religion. Some foods are revered by their cultures. Sometimes religion makes some foods taboo. Some foods are symbolic of religious or cultural ideas. Fasting is an expression of restraint and self-discipline that assists in bringing worshippers closer to their divine by disregarding the needs of the body. Feasting celebrates God, family and harvest. <laughs>